Uh, how was Grind Till Death re uh, received in the in the shows that you did for it? Pretty well. Um, I mean, we don't particularly we don't play that much, so it's hard to tell. I don't know. Who knows? I'm not. We don't have a finger on the pulse, so to speak. So you tell me. Yeah. Well, I'll be seeing you for the first time um, at Necrosonic um, in Brisbane. What are uh, uh, yeah. uh, is there anyone on the the lineup that you're looking forward to seeing, or is it a get in and get out affair? Well, I don't know. Always up for a good night for a party, but pretty keen to see Psychroptic and Misery. See what they sound like after all these years and Crypt. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of bands. We're all pretty old now, so I don't know if we'll make 30 bands, but we'll try our best. It is weird just how it feels like everything's going around in a circle. My first ever indoor gig was I just turned 18 and it was Blood Duster uh, in Tasmania. Oh, awesome. And Psychopathy yeah, right. opening for them. So, wow. That's, <laughs> that's a long time ago. 2004. That was, uh, yeah, the, the kind of era covered in fake blood and Tone came out and. Flicks a cigarette right in my face and they were off. <laughs> That's the way. I was not prepared. Um, mate, what um what plans do you guys have to follow up Grind Till Death? We're actually just recording a new album at the moment. So uh the guitars and drums are done. I'm sort of halfway doing the bass at the moment. So and I think Tony's doing his vocals maybe this week. Mm -hmm. So that should hopefully be out before the end of the year. We're hoping to have it ready for this gig, but we're all a bit slack, so it got pushed back a little bit. How how uh, long have you guys been writing this? Well, Dave pretty much wrote the whole thing. Um, he did the drums, the guitars, everything, had it all ready before Christmas. I think the drums were recorded in February, so... I don't think it was an extremely long process. Dave just tends to pump out the riffs once he gets going. So it's just the rest of the band holding it up. Mainly mainly myself and Tone. Everyone else has done their thing. <laughs> Mate, you can't rush art. <laughs> That's true. We are, we are artists. We're artists. Yes, artists. Artists. Artists, artists yeah. But um, I was just watching some footage of Captain Cleanoff playing um, Obscene Extreme, you know, a long time ago. Oh, yeah. I, every time I Great see... Great shows. Great oh, shows. Man, every time I see that festival, yeah. I, I just get amped because you can hardly tell. There's so many people on stage, you can hardly tell who's in the band at the best. Oh, it's like. out of control. It's pretty much the first thing... It was a Thursday. They were still setting up the stage. The first thing I saw walking in was a guy getting pushed around off his head, and it wasn't even 12 o'clock yet. He was, it was already smashed, and that was pretty much set the tone for the festival. It's just <laughs> four or five days now of just complete madness. It's just every lunatic in Europe goes to this festival, and it's pretty much set up just for lunatics. Yeah. It's really – it's definitely worth going to see. Um, we were lucky enough to, to play, uh, I think, twice now with Blood Duster at Obscene Extreme. So that was a lot of fun. Man, uh, we've um sent one of our journos, uh, she just uh went over there and sent back a uh, video of someone getting pushed around the mosh pit in a wheelchair in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, anything's possible at that fest. It's um, yeah, it's it's madness, compute, complete madness. How do you have you played any other European festivals or was it mainly OEF? Yeah, um, Clean Off played uh, Hellfest in 2013, which was a really good experience. That was a really good festival, massive. And um, I had a few little other fe festivals. Um, but yeah, definitely the favourite was, was obscene. It was, yeah. No, now I'm thinking about it. I really want to go back there. <laughs> What is some of the in in all the time years that you've spent on stage? What is some of the weirdest and this most unhinged shit you've seen in the pit? Well, it probably would have happened at yeah. extreme, <laughs> just like nakedness, 
dudes wearing banana suits. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, but nothing really tops that. <laughs> I mean, most gigs, most gigs are pretty, were pretty loose, especially in the nineties, early two thousands. But that just kind of topped it. Both times we played there was just complete chaos. What were some of the formative uh, gigs for you growing up? Like, what were some of the ones that you went to and they just left it? And I, I imagine, what, like, what was your blood duster, you know, when you... when you Well, it was blood duster, I guess, back in the early 90s. Same same deal, but probably about 10 years ahead of you. Um, but seeing Morbid Angel, I think, in 96 or whatever it was, maybe 92, with Christbait, I think they played with Martyr. That was in Adelaide when I was living in Adelaide. So that was probably the first real sort of death metal gig I went to. That was probably sticks to, in my memory as one of the best ones for me when I was a young kid. <laughs> but yeah, like a lot of, for me, a lot of local bands, I think I always love seeing Damage, Blood Duster, Christbait. All those Melbourne bands were Bean Flipper, Magnesite. They're the sort of bands that I really sort of gravitated towards and really enjoyed seeing them when I was younger. It's It was interesting talking with um, – uh, it was an interview I did with Jason PC. Uh, I'm going to say it was 2020, and, you know, talking about the early days of, you know, just trying to get on, like, the big day out and stuff, you know, how it was a big deal when Blood Duster first played the big day out. You're saying, that, you know, in the 90s – Bands like Christbait were, you know, trying to get onto, you know, these festivals and no one was having a bar of it. It's like, no, nah, it's too heavy, girl, no. folk like it. Now, you know, I, fast I think a lot of now, and Gojira just played the fucking Olympics. You yeah. Know? No, it's pretty crazy. Like, definitely a band like Christbait were well ahead of their time. I mean, you know, had they been around 10 years after they sort of broke up, I think, you know, they could have been massive, but I think a lot of those shows in Melbourne were huge anyway, just they weren't mainstream. But if you went to any of the Punters Club's co shows back in the mid, early, mid-90s, they were packed, they were chockers, which I did go to a couple, which were awesome. What about the, what about albums? What were some of the ones that just... Absolutely blew your mind when you were growing up. Well, probably, uh, well, Downfall, I reckon, Terrorizer, Repulsion, Horrified, all the early Napalm Death, all those sort of things. I mean, I'm pretty, you know, I like a lot of the old stuff. So that for me was probably the better stuff. That sort of kick started my sort of grindcore. You got me right into grindcore, those albums. You did you have pretty strong feelings about side A or side B for uh, for scum? Uh, well, I guess scum probably wasn't my favourite napalm. The mentally murdered EP is probably my favourite napalm. I think that's when they were sort of hitting their stride. That was probably the best example of grindcore back in the mid nineties, mm -hmm. early nineties. It staggered yeah. me. I finally got to see them for the first time uh, last year with Worm Rot, and it staggered me the absolute, the, just the sheer power of Barney's voice. He sounds like ten men yelling at once. Yeah, well, <laughs> and he's got energy. I don't know how they do it for two hours. I'm lucky to do it for half an hour, but those guys still, you know, well in their fifties, yeah, still kill it. Uh, he would attribute that to being a vegan and bike riding. Probably, <laughs> probably. No doubt. So he, Healthy uh, living. I, I asked him where the Fountain of Youth was and he refused to tell me, the bastard. So, keeping it all to himself. Greedy. Greedy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, if you had the chance to to collaborate with anyone in the in the world metal scene, who would who would you pick? I don't know. That's a good question. Who would I pick? I don't know. Anyone that had me, I guess. <laughs> I'm easy. 
<laughs> Anyone that can put up with me. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair. That'd probably be my my one of my criteria as well. <laughs> right. We've we've talked a lot about the, you know, the early days of Grindcore. Who do you see as kind of the the reigning kings of the genre, as varied as it is these days? Well, I guess you'd have to say just for longevity, it'd have to be Napalm Death. But, um, you know, bands like Worm Rock and uh, I don't know if you've ever seen, you, you saw Worm Rock? I did, I did. I saw them with uh, yeah. Gators and yeah. Vocals. Yeah. But for me, like definitely just the classics like Terrorizer, Early Terrorizer, Repulsion. They're the bands that really I, I just always still gravitate to. Yeah. I've got nothing for you, mate. No, no. I'm I'm right there with you. Um one of my favorite people to interview has become um Kevin Sharp from Brutal Truth. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. So serene. Like I absolutely love that dude. Yeah. And you're just the the beard, the no shoes. <laughs> yeah. Probably because he's pretty high. Probably high all the time. Yeah. Oh, it's nice for some, the lucky buggers. Um, mate, awesome. So, yeah, I will be seeing you and, yeah, seeing Remains for the first time at Necrosonic. Um, cool. So, yeah, man, I'll come say hi. And, yeah, thanks for your time. You no worries, mate. Thanks for having us. Easy. Have a good one, mate. Cheers. Catch you, mate. Bye.